Uh, I did not get off track. And I told you that I mentioned to Brother Scott two things that are the prevalent problems in Christianity today, and I told you the first one. No fear of God. The second one is this. Most Christians really don't believe that there's going to be a literal judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> and I say that because of the way that I see Christians living their life. And we say we're Bible believers and we don't want to have anything to do with the Bible scholar. Your King James Bible does not talk about a bema seat. Right. Right. It talks about the judgment seat. Amen. And there's a vast difference in the judge that's sitting in the courtroom residing over that court as opposed to the individual that's sitting on the platform watching over the Olympic Games. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. There's a vast difference. Amen. There is going to be a judgment seat. And you are going to give account for the deeds that you've done in your body since you got saved. Amen. And deeds are works. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay? Not gains. Amen. Amen. If it's a beam of seat, then you're going to be judged for running the race. Yeah. You're not going to be judged for running the race. Running the race is not your work. Paul said in that same context, talking about the judgment seat of Christ, not the being of seat, the judgment seat, he said, therefore knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I think Paul had a fear of God. Yeah. But Paul also had a fear of the judgment seat. Yeah. Because one of the things that he realized is that the judgment seat of Christ his life as a Christian is going to be reviewed in front of all the church for 2,000 years. And every opportunity that God gave that he didn't take is going to be presented to the entire body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Every individual he could have witnessed to. In our day and time, it would go also with the individuals that we should have gave a, or at least offered a gospel track. Yeah. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Paul had a fear of the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. He had a fear of the judge that rests upon that seat. He got a glimpse of Jesus before John did on the Isle of Patmos. And if you read that passage in Revelation chapter 1, his eyes were as a flaming fire. And his feet were as brass. Brass is judgment. And those eyes of fire, you know, I've had a lot of folks comment to me about my eyes when I'm preaching. And, you know, I've had a lot of folks say, Brother Jerry, first time I met you, and first time I heard you preach, and I saw your eyes, they scared me to death. Well, you better look beyond mine, friend, and, and realize that there's coming a day that you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and you're going to look into those eyes of fire. Amen. 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 And one of the reasons why Christianity is in the mess that it's in and this Laodicean church is escalating uh, the way that it is is because of those two things. People don't fear God anymore and we really don't believe in a literal judgment seat of Christ. And I, I know a lot of preachers that, you know, I've heard preachers say, I don't know why some of you guys preach about how you dread the judgment seat of Christ. It's a seat of reward. It's the being of the seat. And I can't wait to get there. And I'm going to see if they still have that attitude when it comes to their time to stand before Jesus. Amen. Yep. I kind of have a feeling when we get there, and they're going to find out how vain their thinking was 
and the vain words that came out of their mouth, I kind of have a feeling they're going to be shaken. And they're going to be terrified of the one that's now recalling the record that was kept of their life after they got saved. Yep. It's a real thing, church. It's, it's real. You're going if you're saved. And if you're not saved and you, you don't get saved, then you're going to go to the white throne judgment. Amen. Amen. And uh, listen, church, you, so here's something else. You know, we've seen that song about no tears in heaven. And that's a good song. That's a fine song. But you have to understand something. You better get this down pat. God doesn't wipe the tears away from our eyes until after the white throne judgment. Yeah. It's after the white throne judgment. It's not at the rapture. It's not at the judgment seat of Christ. It's after the white throne judgment. And the body of Christ is going to be there as a witness. But the thing is, friend, you, even after your judgment at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to see again those individuals that God desired that you win to Him. Yeah. And you are going to see them bow to me. And you're going to see them hear them confess with their mouth. And then you're going to watch as they're being cast off in the lake of fire. Now, I don't know all that's going to take place there, but uh, I don't think it would be far-fetched to really believe that that crowd is going to look out at those that are there to witness and if you were a co-worker that worked beside them five days a week for <coughs> years and you never told them about Jesus, yeah. you never lived for God in front of them, and you never invited them to church, I don't think it'd be too far-fetched for them to just turn around and point their finger at you and say, you never told me. Yep. Or look at you and say, what are you doing up there? I didn't know you was a Christian. Amen. Amen. Yep. Now I know that's, you know, that's serious stuff. Sir. Sure. That's a heavy load, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I trust it won't get you too bogged down. I, I told the men downstairs to pray for the service tonight because it's hard to preach around here this morning. Some of y'all made it real hard for me to preach around here this morning. And it shouldn't be that way. Amen. Amen. I'm here to help you. 